Hey everyone, this is Brittany from NotYourAverageFox.com and today I'm going to be sharing with you all our 2020 to 2021 kindergarten homeschool curriculum. If you guys are new to my channel, then welcome. Hit that subscribe button. I'd love to have you stick around here on my channel. Um, if you enjoy other homeschooling videos, I like to do a lot of that on my channel as well as DIYs. And I like to share just day in the life, motherhood style things. So if you enjoy any of that stuff, then please subscribe. Today I'm really excited to share this video with you all. I've been wanting to share this for quite a while now. I've just been waiting to get all the stuff in the mail and um, I thought June would be a good time to kind of share what we're going to be doing for homeschool this year. So I've got everything and I'm ready to go. So I'm just really excited to show you all what we've got. I don't think there's ever been a better time to homeschool than right now. I'm so thankful that I decided to homeschool before COVID-19 was ever thought of. I understand that a lot of families can't homeschool. Um, they may have different things going on in their lives. You may be a single mom who has like three jobs or something. I don't really know your situation. But if you are thinking about homeschooling or you're choosing to homeschool for the first time this year, I'm obviously not a pro. This is our uh, kindergarten year with my oldest, so I don't have years and years of homeschooling experience. But I can tell you that you can do this. It's not difficult. It's just a matter of just deciding that you're going to do it and putting all that confidence in yourself and just knowing that you can teach your child and you are good enough. So I promise you can do it. If I can do it, then you can do it. So first, before I show you all what we've got, I'm going to talk a little bit about how to choose a curriculum. There are so many curriculums out there. It's a little bit confusing. Uh, some of you may be overwhelmed. I know I certainly was and still am at times and I don't expect that to go away anytime soon. But the first thing I would tell you to do is to research research, research, research. Do as much research as you can on homeschooling in your state. We live in Kentucky. Um, our requirements may be different from someone who lives like in California, for example. Uh, so definitely research your state um, and then just uh, look and see what curriculums are out there. I would say to watch reviews or read reviews on curriculums that other people have chosen and just kind of make your own opinion and uh, just trial and error and see what works best for you guys. If you're new to my channel, then you may not know that um, I started out using the Good and the Beautiful homeschool curriculum last year for Wyatt's preschool year. I bought the Level K Primer course and it was really, really good and I loved it. I decided on choosing their curriculum. I'd seen a lot of good reviews on it and it was just a really beautiful, very colorful curriculum and I was drawn to that personally. So I chose that for Wyatt. It didn't go exactly as smoothly as I thought it would go. Um, and then I'll link that up in the cards if you want to um, just kind of check out our experience using the Level K Primer course. Um, but ultimately what I decided uh, happened was that we started it a little too early. So we started last year in August and then we finished up in December. But I really should have started with the Pre-K course and then started the K Primer um, and then the in the spring semester right before the kindergarten course. I think that would have made a world of difference for Wyatt developmentally and I definitely should have done that first. But saying that, the Good and the Beautiful was awesome. I loved it. It's a really, really good curriculum. We've done a lot of game schooling uh, during the spring semester and a more of an unschooling, chillax kind of approach. I researched other curriculums, weighed everything like as best I could, and ultimately I did decide to go with the Good and the Beautiful this year for kindergarten, and I'm very, very excited to show you all what we've got. So first, I'll go ahead and pull it out here. Got grass on it from taking pictures outside, but here is the math. I bought the math level K for white this year. The math is super exciting. Um, I always knew I was going to choose the good and the beautiful for math. That was not a problem. White loves math. He's super, super excited to do math and he's pretty good at it too. What I love about the good and the beautiful's math is that it's very comprehensive. I think it covers a lot in general. I almost went with a different curriculum, but it didn't uh, even have addition and subtracting in it, which I feel is pretty important for kindergarten. The math course book is very, very colorful. I love all of the colors in it. Some curriculum is black and white and I don't really like that. I think it needs to be engaging and colorful. Uh, for children to get them excited to do math as well. So the math course comes in two books. Here's the first one 
and here's the second one that's split up in here part one and part two and then um, it also this is optional but I did go ahead and purchase this but it was the math kit this includes uh, many uh, different manipulatives um, that go along with the math lessons. You don't have to use it, but it was strongly recommended, so I did go ahead and buy it. I'll just open it here. It comes with a few different things, um, little blocks here, and dice, lots of different things. But something that I was excited about in the math was that in each lesson, um, they include a daily dose. And this is just something repetitive, so hopefully the child can learn it and it sticks with them. And part of the daily dose is a calendar. And it has this in here, so the calendar has, obviously it's like empty, so you can teach your child uh, the days of the week. There's different options here, so you can color a picture and uh, draw what you would like. And I love that because calendar is definitely something we need to be working on. For language arts, I also chose The Good and the Beautiful. This is one that I wasn't quite sure which I wanted to go with, but I did decide to go with The Good and the Beautiful. It comes in, if you buy it, it comes in this um, plastic bag here. I haven't opened or cut out anything in it yet because I wanted to show you all just how it came, but I'll go ahead and pull the book out here. Everything is spiral bound, which I really like. Um, it's pretty simple. I love it because um, the Good and the Beautiful's language arts uh, covers many different subjects and that's what I really like so you don't have to purchase like a thousand different booklets and spend a lot of money. So it's all in this book right here. Um, Wyatt has taken an interest in learning to read this year. He does a lot of video games and um, I think that uh, this curriculum will help him learn to read. It'll build a good foundation for him and I think we'll have a better experience this year versus last year because he is more ready and more prepared to learn. So language arts for the good and the beautiful comes with this booklet here and then it also comes with the level K reader this is just a big book with smaller books within it and then it also has a mini books I haven't cut these out yet still in plastic but I will take these out cut them up and it will instruct you when to read the mini books throughout the course and then also something I still haven't cut out yet is the phonics cards I'm excited about these I love that um, the good and the beautiful's language arts um, is really strong on phonics for the level K course um, so I think that will be really good and beneficial for us okay so the last of our uh, core curriculum for this year is the handwriting course also by the good and the beautiful this is the level K course and I love it it's so tiny spiral bound uh, what I love about the handwriting course for this is that it's really simple there's 102 pages total each page includes a little bit of art so I'll show you an example here. This, for example, has a horse on it. It's a dot to dot, and then the child can have a chance to color. Um, halfway through this little booklet, the text size decreases uh, to compensate for the child's skill so they can learn um, to write a little bit smaller. So that's something that I like about this. So that is all of our core curriculum, uh, all from the good and the beautiful. But you may be wondering, okay, what about science? What about history and that kind of thing? So for that, I've decided to compile them all into unit studies. And these I'm going to try to do myself mostly. Um, I'll throw a little bit of uh, supplemental stuff here and there. But for unit studies, I'm going to do four in total. So I'll do the first two first semester and then the second to second semester and I'm ex really excited to do these. Last year we done a little bit of a mini unit study on wetlands. I'll link that up in the cards um, if you'd like to check that out. Um, but gonna make that a little bit longer, gonna draw it out, uh, read a lot of books. I plan on doing that. A lot of hands-on activities. I think I'm gonna do it mostly nature-based uh, but we'll just see how it goes and I'm excited to take you guys along the journey and just share uh, more about our homeschooling year this year. If you would like a flip through or a more thorough in-depth um, just kind of showing of each of these curriculums or any of them in particular then uh, drop a comment down below and I'll be happy uh, to share with you all some more in-depth on those. But this is all I've got so far for the year. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was helpful. Um, but until next time, I'll see you guys later. Bye!